Hey guys, Saxiomatic Inserts here, and I'm back with another video. So, uh, you probably have seen, uh, and if not, you should check it out, the first video in the series, which was the uh, racing VR, um, and that was just a very basic uh, introduction to tracking using the Oculus integration for Unity. Um, so, this tutorial is going to expand on that, and we're going to go into the basics of movements. Um, basically just taking inputs uh, for the controller and then also um, tracking the controllers so that's basically it um, shouldn't be too hard um, so we're just gonna do that right now okay so the first thing we want to do is just uh, first go over some changes so I've set up this whole scene uh, it's very simple. We have a plane on the ground just for scale so we know when we're moving around uh, if things are working properly. The camera rig, as with the last tutorial, uh, is acting as a container for the main camera. I've added the Oculus integration. If you haven't already, go to the Unity store, search for Oculus integration, add it. Um, you may have to restart Unity, uh, and then once you do that, come back here and continue. So. Now that I've done that, um, basically I just need to clarify that the floor level, as I said in the last tutorial, um, does mean that the origin, uh, in this case the camera rig, um, is based in the origin for the program in which Oculus launches. You know, uh, it, I'm not sure how Oculus determines where the origin will be. I think it's just the location at which um, it is its home is centered or something like that um, but either way the origin in your room uh, is going to be basically at the camera rig location except the elevation will be the floor so whatever height you are that's what your height will be relative to the camera rig so the main camera will be at a different height sort of like this right and that height will be equivalent to your height in meters or your eye level, I should say. So, I hope that's uh, a better illumination as to like the nature of that. So now we're going to add a script to control things. I'm just going to call that controller. We'll add that to the camera rig. Oh, it's still compiling. Let's did that. Uh, do that? No, did not. Okay, there we go. Let's open this up and reload sorry about that I uh, tried to do this tutorial earlier and my PC crashed so I've had to redo it now so we're gonna be working through basically the same ideas so at least there's the added benefit that this will probably go a little bit uh, better in terms of the smoothness um, but yeah I, I hope this uh, helps you out but what we're gonna do first is we're just going to work on tracking the inputs. Um, in order to do that we're just going to take our OVR input and in order to do that I'll just show you. Uh, this is the OVR input page um, on the Oculus developers portal. So you can go to developer.oculus.com or you can just go to um, the well, to Google and just search for Unity OVR input and it'll probably take you there directly uh, instead of going through all these subheadings. Um, I'll try to remember to put the link to the main documentation page in the description, but I may forget that, so just ask if you want that. And uh, yeah, so what we want is the thumbstick, um, as it's called here, which is the analog stick on the controller. So. We're going to grab this, and before we do, I just want to make a note of what this is. So it's, it returns a vector 2 of the primary, typically the left thumb six current state. That's what I have mine set to. Um, and it gives you the X and Y, meaning the vertical and horizontal uh, movement of the stick. So in two directions, um, because obviously the stick has two axes on which you can rotate. And then it gives you a range of negative 1 to 1 for each of those as a float. So that all uh, out of the way, I'm just going to launch this and get access to that. Actually, we can just 
copy this since that's exactly what we need um, so oh and then button for the primary thumbstick is just the uh, ability to press it and you know it has like a nice click sort of like on uh, the DualShock controllers so we're gonna make this a vector 2 we'll call this input and this is just going to contain the input values from the game uh, and then the next thing we want to do is just add a vector 3 uh, and this is going to be when we convert this input into a three-dimensional uh, vector because obviously we're going to be moving the character in world space um, but now we need to get into something a little bit more technical so currently we are uh, if we use these values raw we're going to be moving the player on the X and uh, Z axes of world space Y is vertical so we are going to replace Y with uh, Z in this case um, but we're going to be moving them on the X and Z axis axes right um, the issue is that you know that's not how this is supposed to work movement should be in the direction in which the player is looking and as a result uh, we're gonna have to transform the direction so the first thing we need to do is declare a new game object so we're gonna call this public game object camera um, and this will be the instance of the camera that is a child object of this and we're gonna say movement equals uh, camera that transform so the cameras uh, transform and then we can transform direction and what this does is it returns the direction um, so a vector of magnitude 1 uh, in world space from local space so in this case that's exactly what we need because it's by default the thumbstick is in the local space or in our case is in the local space of the player um, so that's how we're gonna treat that so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say input dot x zero as I said y is not uh, going to be used since z is actually our horizontal axis other than x um, and then input sorry, dot y uh, in the place of z and now um, we're just going to take this and set the y value to zero and the reason for this is that if the player is looking down um, at all and they're not looking perfectly horizontally in some direction um, we're going to end up with a y component and if we just move them uh, using this original vector they're gonna start you know flying around and not staying on the ground so we're gonna remove that to prevent situations like that and now we have to scale our movement because we've removed a component um, of a vector that was length one and we want to be able to make sure that if they look down and we lose a part of that vector they don't move slower just because they're you know not looking straight forward so we're gonna divide this by movement dot magnitude uh, and now we have to use a ternary operator and the reason for that is that here uh, if we were to simply leave this as is if there's no input the magnitude will obviously be zero because there's nothing this is just a zero vector and this will be a zero vector and so will this and so we're gonna get a divide by zero error so we're gonna add in a protection against that we'll say movement dot magnitude equals zero and if it does equal zero we're just going to return the uh, zero vector and then if it doesn't we'll just do this because we won't have any errors then so that fixes that now what we want to do is just scale this so we have a vector of length one what we can do with it is scale it to be a certain speed so in this case we need time dot delta time to make this independent of frame rate um, and then <clears throat> we'll choose a speed we'll call this uh, walk speed and actually here we'll make a public constant constant float and we'll call this walk speed this is basically just going to be um, a constant specifying the 
speed at which the character is going to walk in any given direction. So now that we have that, oh, um, it'll work. Uh, but we do need to make this multiply multiplicative, so we're going to multiply the magnitude of this vector, basically. Each component of the vector will be multiplied by this speed, and that will give us an end result of a length um, that ends up rendering a walk speed of 2.5 meters per second in this case. And now we have one more thing we need to do, which is this dot transform dot translate. So we're going to translate the player by however many units the movement vector specifies in each direction. And then we'll put movement in here. All right, so that is all set. Now, if we come in here, you can see it's all attached, but uh, it should. Yep, there it is. We're just going to drop the camera onto that. And hopefully this works. Uh, sometimes Unity can be a little bit finicky on the first try about getting the headset to work. So I'm just going to get up and get the headset. And hopefully we'll get this to work um, without too much of a struggle. So I will play it. And I'll uh, grab the controllers, back up a bit so I can see everything. And you can see now I can actually move around. Um, you can't see my joystick input, um, but if I hit the forward button on the joystick, or the forward direction on the joystick, you can see I move forward, backward. If I turn, I move in that direction instead. And if I turn while I'm moving, you can see I move basically exactly how uh, I'm looking. I can move sideways. I can move in a circle if I want. So yeah, that's all perfect. Now we're going to do um, sprinting. And then I'm going to call this tutorial um, and just discuss basically what the next one's going to be very briefly. So. I'm just going to take off the headset for a moment and I'm going to do very quickly um, sprinting. So we did walking, but the way we did walking is very convenient because we have this walk speed variable. What we can do now is we can use the ternary operator again. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to specify new constant. We'll say public constant floats. Uh, Oops. run speed equals, I have no idea how fast the average person runs, maybe uh, six uh, meters per second. I don't know. That seems really fast. Let's try five and a half. I think two and a half meters per second is also pretty fast, so maybe we'll do that. It doesn't even matter. Um, and what we're going to do is we're again going to go back to our uh, OVR input reference. And you can see we have this line here, which checks if the thumbstick is pressed. So this is a Boolean. <coughs> and what we can do is we can add a ternary operator. So we're going to put this in parentheses. You can do this as an if statement if you want. It will be exactly the same. Um, and because it's a Boolean, we don't need to check it conditionally at all. Um, so we're just going to do this. And then. We're going to say, you know, if they have it pressed, we're going to do our run speed. And otherwise, we're going to go with our walk speed. Oh, whoops, that should not be a, another ternary evaluator. So there we go. Now we've done that. Um, what that means is now when we launch this, if we press the button, we should be able to sprint. So I will grab the headset again and just demonstrate that for you in a moment. Just get this thing nice and snug and get the controllers and we will see. So you can see I can move around. This is my normal speed and that is my running speed. So you can see there's a significant difference and uh, I can run in any direction. Maybe in a game you would want to limit the degree to which you can run backwards. I don't know. Um, this is really my infancy with uh, 
trying out different mechanics in VR, so I can't tell you what really works and what doesn't. Um, but you know, that's for you to decide and for you to experiment with. Um, so I hope this has helped you with movement. I haven't seen a lot of useful stuff that doesn't use um, the Unity prefabs from uh, Oculus, and I feel like those are kind of you know cheating to an extent. They don't really teach you a lot. Um, so I'm trying to create this stuff from scratch. In the next video, we're going to do uh, controllers, so controller tracking and uh, grabbing objects. So that should be interesting stuff, uh, grabbing and throwing and all that, um, which is really fun to write. And then uh, after that, I think the other thing we're going to go into, um, just, you know, with my short plan I have right now for the roadmap of this stuff, is uh, moving, you know, up slopes and down and around, you know, uh, as opposed to just on flat ground like this, because this can't handle, you know, different terrain. Um, but in the future, we're going to deal with that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment, um, subscribe if you enjoy this stuff, and if you want to see more of it, want to see when I upload. Um, and yeah, just... Uh, you know, tell me if you have any suggestions for more of this stuff that you want um, in Unity or, you know, just VR, all that stuff. Um, I'm open to ideas. So, yeah, uh, that's it, guys.